Is it just me or is the messiest area in the house always the kitchen? Between food prep, junk drawers, and all of the gizmos and gadgets we have, it's no wonder that it's always cluttered. So today I'm going to be talking about how to keep a clutter-free kitchen and hopefully it will encourage you to live a more minimal lifestyle as well. The simplest way to have a clutter-free kitchen is to ensure that all of your surfaces are clear of any clutter. This means putting away small appliances or your cutting board and sorting through all of the mail that you bring in instead of putting it on the countertops like we do. And don't forget that your fridge does count as a surface. Unless you have small children who like to display their artwork or their report cards, you really shouldn't have many things cluttering the surface of your fridge. I used to be the type of person who would collect magnets from all the places that I went and I would put them up on the fridge, but I noticed that I wouldn't really take the time to appreciate those small magnets because they were just clutter. I encourage you to really consider what you're putting up on your fridge because it is something that you will be seeing on a daily basis when you go into your fridge. In line with storing small appliances, if you're wondering if that includes putting away your toaster or your coffee maker, which you use every day, no, you don't have to put it away if you don't want to but you do have to consider the appeal of storing those things for a clutter-free counter. I don't use my toaster or blender every single day, so I take the time to store those because it only takes a few seconds, and honestly, I get more benefit from a clear counter than having those out for easier access. One thing I do have sitting on my counter that I cannot store is my coffee maker. If you've watched my other videos, you know that I love my coffee maker. It is the best gift that Kyle's ever bought for me, and I use it almost every single day, whether it's making coffee or just boiling water for tea. We also recently got an air fryer for Christmas and we have actually been using it every single day so far, <laughs> but it's not something I want to keep out on the counter because it's very big and bulky and it's not really pretty to look at. So I take the 20 seconds to just store it in the cupboard across from the kitchen in order for us to have a more clutter-free area. So now we're going to get into the decluttering section of the video, which means that you will actually start to look at all the things you own in your kitchen and all the things that live there and consider whether or not you should keep them. The easiest thing to look through first is anything that might be a duplicate. So when Kyle and I first started dating, we each had our own kitchenware. But when we moved in together, all of our things combined and soon we found that we had duplicates of a lot of things, such as cutlery, plates, Tupperware, and it wasn't until a year into living together that we decided to kind of pare down our belongings and really get rid of the things that we no longer needed. Now we have one set of utensils that all matches, one set of Tupperware that all matches. The only thing that doesn't match is our cups, bowls, and plates because I believe Kyle's were all plastic and we decided to get rid of those, but I had two different sets from two different times in my life and we haven't really decided which style we prefer. So we're kind of just using them until they either break or we fall in love with something we see online or in stores. Along with getting rid of duplicates, you want to make sure that you are decluttering any items in your kitchen that only have single purpose. And by this I mean getting rid of items that cannot be used for multiple things, such as an avocado peeler. I just use a regular knife or my fingers to peel an avocado. I don't need a special gadget to do that. We used to have a water boiler that I got as a gift and I loved, I used it almost every single day. But then when I got my coffee maker, I found that my coffee maker was perfectly capable of boiling water for me as well. So I ended up getting rid of the water boiler because the coffee maker can make me coffee and boil water and the water boiler can only boil water for me. In addition to getting rid of those small appliances or gadgets that only have one purpose, you can also consider getting rid of specialty items. When I say specialty items, I really mean things that you only bring out for certain occasions. I'm not saying that you need to get rid of your special china that your grandmother gave you or doilies from your mother, but really consider the things that you're keeping in your kitchen. For example, I have a ton of drink stirrers from my mother that she gets whenever she goes to Mexico, and I love them and I cherish them and I do use them almost every day but I do have some that are duplicates and some that I don't like, so I have decided to get rid of a few of those. And she also, years ago, gave me a wine glass that is glazed or painted with candles and it says happy birthday on it. And although it's really cute and I appreciate it, 
It's not something that I've ever used and I'm not going to have it on display in my kitchen just because it's not really my style. Small sentimental items like these can be difficult to let go of, so I recommend taking pictures of all of these items and then keeping those digital memories instead of keeping the clutter in your life. I hope these tips encourage you to declutter your kitchen and really make you consider what you're keeping. Whether that's a sentimental flower vase your mom gave you for your graduation or a wine glass for your birthday, really take a moment to consider if this item is bringing you joy and if you're getting use out of it. If not, consider donating to your local donation center or gifting to a friend who you know will love it. Until next time, bye!